Hello from the Yarn Closet in St. David, Arizona. My name is Laura. Yeah, I blue dried my hair a little differently today, which is to say, just put the brush attachment on and went straight. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I am Yarn Closet AZ on Instagram, the Yarn Closet over on Patreon. Feel free to follow us for free. There are plenty of free pattern downloads there. And doodly doo doo doo, what else? If you want to email me, you can email me at theyarncloset.com um, or at the yarn, the yarn closet at yahoo.com. Guess what? I have officially become 50. My husband, who's not a presents person, I never know what to get ya. Yarn, but not one skein. <laughs> um, oh yeah, say hi to Tiger. He's our I have to get into everything guy. And, um, and then Rusty's down here, I'm petting him. So anyway, I live down just over an acre in St. David, Arizona, which is about an hour south of Tucson. What's that? What's that? Um, we've got close to 40 pecan trees and three poodles that live inside, two kids that live inside, two kittens and two older cats. Um, one is three-legged. And then about one to two dozen cats outside. Nobody has a clue, really, the numbers. There's so many little farms around us that um, kind of just let their cat populations go crazy. So we have started the Trap Neuter Release program um, because my parents have moved here and my stepdad is driving them into a vet in Tucson that will do the Trap Neuter Release program. Um, so that is huge. We are hoping to eventually get through at least the main crew that hangs around my house. Um, I do like to keep a crew of cats around outside because they minimize the tarantulas and the scorpion something or other bugs and just we've got crazy bugs. And then if you minimize that and the mice, then you minimize the snakes. Um, which we've never had an issue with. So, plus I don't think any cat really wants to live outside. So I don't want to just keep creating dozens and dozens and dozens. Plus, you know, I feel bad because you do need to feed them a fair amount to keep them consistently at your property. Um, and also pick a place where they want to eat. Last winter, either the guy across the street was feeding them better or they didn't like the cold of the side that I feed them during the summer, which is shaded and stuff. So now I've started to feed them out front um, and put some things in our porch so that they come in um, and get out of like the rain and stuff at night. So that's my stuff. It's me in a nutshell. Um, but back to Mr. I don't know what to get you. Uh, so I have tattoos and these arms were never equal. I had one that stopped here and one that actually stops about here on the inside. Um, so he got me a tattoo from a local guy. Since this arm is kind of a conglomeration of people. And I got an L for Larry, my oldest child, who's 26. I'm very proud of him. He got a job at Tucson um, Convention Center. He's doing very well. Um, loving it, which is the most important thing. He's loving it. And so now my arms are kind of like, like equal. It wasn't the most important thing to me. I wanted the L for Larry. Um, but I do like having it equal and done and whatever. Um, 
Plus it was fun to just get out and do something by myself as a grown up for a few hours. I'm legally blind, so I'm rarely ever alone. Which is also why the podcasting has not been very consistent. It's been a difficult season these last couple months. And, you know, someday we'll get around to that. Um, so we have the 26 year old we have living in Tucson. We have the 13 year old at home and the six year old. Um, 13 year old is in ninth grade and homeschooled and doing pretty good, but he's 13. Good gravy. I mean, he's like so much taller than me. It's crazy. Like five, 10. Um, don't, don't scratch my arm. That kind of hurt. And it's really kind of bruised more than in past years. It's been a long time since I've had any tattoos. Um, the knitting, I've been doing a lot of knitting. I actually have, and it's finally starting to be cool here. We get in St. David, it's um, right over the San Pedro Valley um, aquifer. So we get seasons. So I have been knitting. I've been knitting a lot of sweaters. I sent a bunch of stuff off to my niece who um, is on the East Coast at MIT, whatever. So I made this one for myself and it was kind of a rolled boat neck, but the yarn just kept loosey goosey in. So, and I hand knit this one because as you can see, I have a knitting machine and a circular sock machine from Dean and Bean, which is a um, printed one. So what I did was, you know, I would normally reinforce with a crochet chain inside of like a regular two by two rib neck or a turtleneck. Um, so I went ahead and did the crochet chain, but I did it a few rows in and it kind of folded the edge over. So it's similar to that rolled look, I think. You know, I'm legally blind, so I think I'm like a row off here from here. Like, I think I somehow jumped, whatever. But, I mean, I really do like this one. Um, what was the yarn? Oh, it was a for sale hobby yarn, Zafira Cotton Wool Acrylic. So it'll have some strength. It'll have some give. I still have not ever blocked it. Um, but it will also have, it's a little, just the slightest bit itchy, but it doesn't bother my skin, which is saying a lot. I have a severely like sensitive skin. My daughter's is so bad this year that we do, we're in a one month steroid cream twice a day with this other stuff. In the evenings, she takes just a clean shower, which is just a warm shower. She's on all clean products, no, fragrances, no whatevers. Um, and then after that shower and then the, the creams that get put on, she put on cotton stuff that's kind of warm and wet, wrap her in her big robe and stick her in bed. So it kind of really soaks in. And shockingly, shockingly, because we went to the dermatologist recently, um, it was hard to get her into one. Her program didn't... Uh, her insurance didn't cover anything real close to us. So anyway, we finally got her into my dermatologist who did my cancer removal on my forehead last year. Um, older people, get checked. You don't want to let this stuff go. I had the tiniest little dot and I ended up with this huge incision. Um. Anyway, the regular doctors have always given her, oh, we'll switch to this cream. Two weeks of that, two weeks of that. And the doctor said, you know, during an episode like this, it's got to be for like a full month. Um, and just her system is just too over overshot. Um, so she's having a severe immune response to like everything. Plus, who knew this? Kittens give off more allergic danders than adult cats. So one of the kittens definitely sleeps with her. So that might also 
contribute to it. Um, she has an allergy that my dad has, and my dad's allergic to cats. So maybe she's got a mild cat allergy. Dermatologist says that could very easily pass by the time the kittens are a year to 18 months old. Which is fine, because she's not getting rid of those kittens. And, and I'm watching them right now just go to town. They are so lively and adorable. It's stinking cute. Um, and my parents took in Baby, one of the outside TNR cats, because she was obviously not wanting to go back outside. And she has made a good transition into inside life. Oh, hold on. Plus, my stepdad has been in Tucson a lot with his sister and my dad for um, grocery shopping, doctor, regular doctor appointments. He's 83. There's more of them. And my stepdad drives for him because he doesn't drive anymore. So my mom's been down here alone a lot. So the kitten gives her company. Um, and of course, the kids, we go over and visit. And it's so nice to be close. Like the daughter's over there now. Um, Satellite Sadie in. Um, Sadie's doing pretty good. It's, you know, those of you who've been here for a while know that my retired guide dog is a poodle named Sadie. She's 12 and, yep, she's 12. And she's going blind. It's gotten really bad in the last year. When she went under to have her dental, she had a mild stroke. And she has seemed to have come back quite a bit from that. After the stroke, she had a lot of um, cluster seizures, which they were worried were indicative of having another major stroke, but we seem to have held that at bay. Um, I was doing very high doses of Asher House CBD, uh, which also has MCT oil in it, which I think makes a difference. Um, and so now she's back to a more maintenance routine. Um, I don't know if you are still there. Are you still there? Did I just end you? I don't think I ended you. Sorry, my mom was concerned about my daughter's skin. I had to respond to that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this one. I like it. I didn't make those sleeves real long because, you know, but I like having them looser. That's also why I like more of a bracelet-y length. And then if you do have a long sleeve something on, <clears throat> and also because of the blindness, if I have too much here, then I get caught on things. Okay, my mom had to FaceTime. Um, so I will throw in a couple pictures from our FaceTime of her property. She lives on a half acre, uh, surrounded by a couple of farms. So she's got chickens that end up in her backyard, sheep uh, that don't end up in her backyard, cattle, pigs. I mean, it's fun. She likes it. She grew up on a farm. And uh, my stepdad, well... He grew up on a farm till he was about five or six, but he's more of an indoor person. And But there's a lot of indoor space. They have a, a regular home and he he likes it too. It's very quiet down here. Like I said, it's it's you don't quite feel like you're in Arizona. It's very green, trees. Um, so I love that part. We all love that part. We're from Minnesota. Um, and being in small town is nice can hear the football games at high school and it's just it's just nice it's just fun but my uh, knitting life has been kind of crazy I've made a bunch of stuff and just haven't haven't taken a lot of pictures haven't done a lot I am working on my second one of these I actually started a second one in the same yarn um but then put that on hold 
to start this one for my girlfriend who is shorter than I am. And I think the cutout for the arm might have been a little too big, so I'm trying to shape. I don't often shape my, ar my arms. This is not a big deal to me, but these were quite big. And this is um, using two strands of worsted and just Super Saver. So it feels a little bit heavier now, but once it's um, blocked, it will soften quite a bit and give her a little bit more um, length, although she's pretty short torso. torso. <gasps> Who did that? What's that? Oh no, what happened there? Oh, I found it. Woo. So I was trying to do some basically like intarsia, which is a form of color work where you're doing like a block of color in a design. So in the middle, so that it has some similar properties to regular color work um, in that you have to leave it loosely going from one spot to the other spot. Um, I didn't want to have a gazillion um, ends in the back, so I was trying to carry and stuff, and I didn't do a good enough job. I think you can tell that it's a purple heart, because she wanted purple and green. It didn't occur to me purple heart when I made a purple heart. So, this ain't pretty. It was too tight, and I just decided, well, tough, so I just cut everything down the center and then just tied it off all around the side. And I hope that that will be fine. I mean, this is for a grown up after all. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna manage her neckline because I don't want the same thing to happen to mine. But if she doesn't love this, I may just do um, a very short, two or three rows of one by one rib or two by two rib. So it's very short, but still keeps that boat neck shape. Um, I need to start one of these where I actually start in like a two by two rib and then continue on. Um, I just find it much faster and easier to start this way. And I'm not great at picking up the next stitches. So I gotta work on that. But it's split on the side, it's double the length in the back, she's very short-waisted, so I think this will work. It's to be just a throw on, warm in the evenings, kind of heavy winter sweater. And I'm trying to get it done quickly. So I'm on to the sleeves and then a little neck reinforcement. Um, so I'm hoping to get it done this next week. And she took me out for a lovely birthday lunch. We had sushi and yes, a little bit of sake. And we had the sweet sake, which she had not had before. Well, it almost killed her. Way to go, birthday Laura. She's allergic to strawberry food um, flavorings, probably due to Oh, she's also the red dye color thing, so who knows if that's connected, I don't know. But it had strawberry, fake strawberry flavoring in it. So a couple hours after lunch, she's like, do you feel okay? Like I'm getting a temperature and I just don't feel good. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And uh, the bottle was really funky, so we actually brought it home and, or she did, they have a bottle collection. Um, we very rarely, my husband doesn't drink. I rarely drink. Um, and she, so she was able to look and see that that's what it was. So she got in the Benadryl just in time because her tongue was starting to swell and good gracious. The ironic thing is my daughter is allergic to fresh strawberries. Um, So she's the one I'm making the sweater for. So I've made a lot of these like hand knit and hand crocheted little slipper socks. Um, they're great, I love them. But I wear them all the time and since I'm housebound, 
you know, I'm in these a lot. And then I get bigger, like slip on shoes to run outside to muck for the chickens or whatever. And where's the other one? You know, I have a bunion on one foot, so I tend to blow out a fair amount, but I am using the um, speed weave style darning tool, you know, where you put this underneath and then you've got these that you can attach to and kind of make a weft and a weave scenario so that your patches are much, much stronger, which I love. Um, but now I'm trying to recreate it on the machine and see if I can blow out like half a dozen of these for maybe some Christmas presents or teacher presents or something. Um, I don't tend to find a lot of time to work on the machines. They're a little bit noisy. Um, kids with school or naps or whatever makes it a bit challenging. Um, but we're working on it. And that's my thing this season of life. I realize I'm 50. My give a damn is broken. I mean, it totally expires what happened. You hit 50, your give a damn expires. You're just done. And I realized that these kids are growing up no matter what. I want them to love me and like me. I want to be a part of their adult lives. I need to do my job and do it well, but also do it reasonably. Keeping a lower stress home environment um, than I grew up in. And um, then I see some of the parents around me creating um, which is hard when you find out that your kid is maybe not being the nicest to one of the other kids because I have a girl. So now we're in that if there's three of them, I like this one this day and that one that day. And um, and then the girls cry about it. And then the crying is so much harder than the boys stomping off business. Uh, so all in all, there are plenty of days where at the end of the day, I don't have enough left and I can't see well enough that I feel like doing the knitting. And yes, I knit mostly by feel, but still I have to think a lot about what I'm doing. Um, and that's just tiring. It's just, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but I am hoping here that I can do a modified pattern on the machine and get some of these knocked out. Um, we are starting this afternoon or tomorrow to put in some laminate floors at my mom's house. Her house is adorable. It's still got some of the original 1960s things like a pink oven that opens like this on the wall. Gets stinking hot to the touch. It's very similar to my green one, but it works well. Um, and opening that way is very functional for her because she's going to go completely blind. Um, So that's really all I got. Like, I wish I had more knitting to show you, show you, but I will toss in some pictures if I have them or if I can find them. I'll maybe throw in a couple of my mom's place in the oven. It's adorable. The kids have a room over there with two twin beds in it that they, I don't know they'll ever stay over at the same time, but they love it. Um, and so it is definitely nice for that. We actually got to take my daughter, my husband and I, together to the dermatologist the other day. And it had been a long time since we didn't have to go all of us together or whatever. And she really appreciated that one-on-one -on -one time. I'm re-listening to the five love languages of children. Um... And I hope that's going to help too. Uh, it's definitely renewed some of the things that I've always known. Um, not being able to do the same things that other moms do, you know, drive your kids to places, whatever. I really give them a lot of physical touch. I do a lot of, you know, let's cuddle and read a book. Let's cuddle and watch a video. Um, let's cuddle and say prayers before bed. Talk about your day. And... 
hey, if I got more cuddling, I'd be a more pleasant person too. So I think it's valid, even though they say it's like this big deal thing for kids. And that made me feel good because, you know, we do what we do. And it's sometimes nice to have someone say, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I hope everybody is staying calm going into the holiday season and that they're making choices to make that season easier and less stressful. Um, I hope to get back to you again soon. I think about you all the time. I love that you continue to visit and subscribe and like stuff and comment. I love the comments. Um, I'm trying to think of a few giveaways here for the holiday season. Um, if you have any suggestions, things you like, let me know. And I will be putting out a video when I get my Dean and Bean 2.0 upgrade for the machine. Dean and Bean started out as a two-cylinder sock machine, which made it a bit challenging. Having experience with sock machines, I was okay with it. I tend to just crank a tube anyway. But now they're switching to the one um, cam system. So I bought the upgrade. It's only $90. After shipping, it was like $107. And it's, if it intimidates you, it shouldn't. It's very simple. You just unscrew some stuff, put the new stuff in. These components are recyclable, uh, not recyclable, um, biodegradable. So I don't know that you would want to put it in your own compost heap, but if you know that your trash goes somewhere that's being buried or whatever, you can feel comfortable that it will compost eventually. Um, I will have a video out when I get that and it'll be a video of me doing it. So hopefully that'll be an entertainment and maybe an encouragement to those of you who are challenged mechanically. Um, oh, what was that kitten noise? But get to, it's easier. They can entertain each other instead of your, use your legs to climb and stuff. Uh, look with your heart first, and I hope to talk to you soon. Happy birthday to you.